my dear friends, it is a pleasure and an honor for me to return to St. Margaret Mary Parish again on this fifth Sunday of Easter as we continue to fix our gaze on the risen Christ whose Easter victory has changed the course of human history like no other. The resurrection of Christ from the dead confirmed and certified that he is the Lord of life and conqueror of death, the Lord of love and victor over hatred, the Lord of pure goodness and the vanquisher of all evil. For these and so many other reasons, the dedication of the new bell tower and Easter are one long holy day of 50 days, for it is the day the Lord has made, and let us rejoice and be glad in it. What brings me to join you today is the completion of the wonderful work that you have been engaged in for these last years, the Rebuilding a House construction project. How fittingly that the final chapter in this vital page of your parish's history is the blessing of the bell tower that supports the church's bells and adds a finishing touch to the physical beauty that enhances the appearance of the new structure's frontage. Yes, you have become a statement in this community. I'm so gratified that Monsignor Gaston, your pastor, has been so successful in leading the parishioners here in supporting this final phase of this very ambitious rebuilding project. Your response to his leadership has been absolutely phenomenal and is a great testimony to your generosity and to his ministerial skills. The bell tower and its bells do not in fact represent some extra icing on the church's cake, but, an, but become another medium by which we announce God to the world in a very beautiful way. While the tower points upward, the traditional direction for our prayer to God, encouraging us to pray, the bells it houses summons us in a horizontal way to prayerful awareness of God's existence and his presence among us. Perhaps no modern person stated the case for the value of church bells, as well as the noted Trappist monk and mystic Thomas Merton. In one of his books entitled Thoughts in Solitude, we read his thoughts on church bells, and I quote him. Bells are meant to remind us that God alone is good, that we belong to him, that we are not living for this world. Our goal is transcendent. Our lives are pointed outward and upward. They break in upon our cares in order to remind us that all things pass away and that our preoccupations are not that important. They peel over the living and the dead in cemeteries. And there is something else. They speak to us of our freedom, which responsibilities and transient cares make us forget because they tie us down and don't lift us upwards. The bells are the voices of our alliance with the God of heaven and earth. They tell us that we are his true temple. They call us to peace within him and within ourselves and remind us that we are temples of the Holy Spirit." End of quote. Yes, dear friends, the bells say Worldly business does not matter so much. Rest in God and rejoice, for this world is only the figure and the promise of the world to come, and only those who are detached from transient things can possess the substance of the eternal promise. The bells say, I think, 
We have spoken for centuries from the towers of great churches. We have spoken to the saints, to your fathers and mothers, in their land, and to you in the challenging landscape in which you live. The bells say we call them as we call you to sanctity. We have called them and you to keep holy the Lord's day by returning to God a share of our time. They invite us to make holy the Lord's day. Besides saying, be good, come to church, the bells say, keep the commandments. But above all, they say, Christ is risen and Christ will come again. And the bells say also, come with us, God is good. Salvation is not that hard. His love has made it easy. And this, our bell's message, has always been for everyone to come and to hear. <coughs> Their song is as perfect as the Father in heaven is perfect. And they, as they ring out, put out their sonorous and loving call to all. I think there are so many moving sounds to this Easter season today, and one of the sweetest to our ears and hearts has to be the words of sacred scripture today. In the very second reading from St. Peter, it seems the sacred words are an echo of what your great building program has been about, a reminder to keep things in perspective. And so listen to Peter's words. The Lord is the living stone rejected by men, but chosen by God and precious to him. Set yourselves close to him so that you too may be living stones making a spiritual house. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people set apart to sing praises to God who has called you out of darkness into his own wonderful light. Yes, you have kept that perspective. You are indeed the living stones in this magnificent spiritual house built for the honor of God, to which you have contributed so much time, talent, and treasure so generously. And in the gospel, what more appropriate words could you and the parish of St. Margaret Mary hear today than these words of Jesus spoken on the night of his farewell in the context of the Last Supper. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and trust in me. There are many rooms in my father's house. If there were not, I should have told you. I would not have told you. I am going to prepare a place for you, and then I shall come back and take you to where I am. This spiritual house on earth is only a reflection then of the home which has been prepared for us in heaven. This bell tower rises like a giant exclamation point, punctuating the text of the vicissitudes of our earthly journey. The bells themselves are the timekeeping for your earthly journey in its various stages. Monsignor Gaston is soon to be moving to a new assignment, to a different community at Mother of Sorrows in Murraysville. All of us know him as a visionary leader, a strong administrator, a trusted confidant, a wonderful preacher, but most importantly, an exemplary priest. You know also that he has been here for over 16 years and therefore has become an integral and cohesive part of both the parish community and the lower and the larger community of Lower Borough and its environments. You likewise know that he is respected also far beyond that. Yes, this time is a challenge to the pastor and to you, the parishioners. 
I thank you for your understanding that after all these years, Monsignor Gaston is needed elsewhere, just as he was needed here for this time and place years ago. To bring this marvelous enterprise of parish, renovation, expansion, and completion to fruition with his most impressive talents. You know, when you're really good, everybody wants you. <laughs> so now I think it is time for you to allow Monsignor to share his formidable gifts with others. All the more so, this bell tower will be a reminder of the time he shared with you to build this parish into such a beautiful, vibrant, spiritual edifice, which is to proclaim that Christ is truly risen and that he loves us. You might want to consider how your bell tower could be a concrete reflection of Monsignor's accomplishments here. I want to thank him for his outstanding leadership and join with you in blessing him in his new endeavors. And by way of parenthesis, I must tell you of how consoled I was when I heard that he told one of his groups in the parish last weekend that he came here with black hair and is leaving with gray, <laughs> and that he blamed all of you for that and not me. <laughs> As we continue with our liturgy, which is our act of thanksgiving, may the Lord touch our hearts and minds with consolation and strength to help us all through this transitional time and to reach the safe haven that our patroness here, St. Margaret Mary of Alacoc, referred to as his most sacred heart. In conclusion, I invite you to recognize Monsignor Gaston with a heartfelt round of applause.